Hello, ladies and gentlemen. March 9th was celebrated as World Kidney Day in alignment with the theme for this year, which was Kidney Health for All, preparing for the unexpected, supporting the vulnerable, is today's discussion titled Kidney Transplants, Separating Facts from Fiction. The session will delve into some of the lesser known and still lesser understood aspects of kidney transplants. Let's start the session with some context setting. Did you know that one tenth of our population or one in every 10 Indians suffer from chronic kidney disease or CKD, a condition in which progressive damage to the kidneys causes a reduction in kidney function, affecting the filtration abilities of the organ? The most common causes of CKD are lifestyle diseases like hypertension and diabetes, which have become routine amongst us Indians. If CKD goes undiagnosed or uncontrolled, it can lead to irreversible damage to the kidneys and progress to what is called end-stage renal disease. This, if left untreated, can be life-threatening. At this stage, the only treatment that works is dialysis or a kidney transplant, which attempt to replace the normal functioning of the kidneys. Medical evidence suggests that out of the two solutions, a kidney transplant offers many more gains in the long run. But the number of kidney transplants taking place in India is dismal. Out of about 2 lakh patients that get diagnosed with CKD each year, only about 11,000 undergo a kidney transplant, which is less than 5%. There are many factors responsible for this. There is a shortage of organs available for transplant. There are several myths surrounding organ donation and kidney transplantation, due to which patients are uncertain about the process. As we raise awareness about the importance of kidneys to our overall health, this World Kidney Day, let's bust some of the common myths associated with transplants and talk about the gains it brings for those suffering from renal failure. I'm your host, Sakshi Mandwal, and joining me for today's conversation is Dr. Sanjeev Gulati, Principal Director, Nephrology and Kidney Transplant, Fortis Escorts Group of Hospitals, Delhi and NCR. Dr. Gulati is also the President of the Indian Society of Nephrology. We also have with us Dr. Shalani Menon, Country Medical Lead, India for Sanofi. Welcome to the discussion, doctors. It's an absolute pleasure to have you with us on the show. Thank you. Thank you, Sakshi. Thank you, Sakshi. Welcome once again, doctors. Now, before we get started with the discussion, I would like to play a short video for our viewers. It is a true life story of kidney transplantation of a couple where the husband got a new lease of life after his wife donated one of her kidneys. Let's have the video. My name is Ketan Shah and this is my story. A story about how life has challenged me and how I overcame it. Initially, my life was pretty good. Like I used to go to office, uh, have meeting with my client. I used to go to temper every Sunday morning, meeting with my friends, family, going out, traveling, uh, you know, outside India, everywhere. See, eight to ten years ago, like, you know, life has given me full shock. Like, you know, it has thrown a googly on my way. I was diagnosed with uh, uh, hypertension and uh, my renal profile indicates that my create labor, creatine level is around 2, which is too high. I used to take lots of painkiller. Uh, my food habit was not regular and being a chartered accountant in practice, so there was lots of work pressure. I still remember that day very clearly when the report came and uh, the creatinine level was 2. At that time we were not knowing the seriousness of it until we went to the doctor and he, the fact was that uh, he was diagnosed with a renal failure. And at that time we were literally shocked how to go ahead with it, how we'll be able to fight with it. So back of mind we were worried, okay, but you know, sooner or later we had to take some call. And once doctor also said, okay, you know, it's now time whether we choose between dialysis or transplant. So I called my sister, my Jijaji, plus my in-laws also. 
like you know we had a family uh, discussion uh, we decided to fight back and come out stronger after all giving up was never an option for us and our family our loved ones all were together and supported us and because of that we won half of our battle so we felt like you know we are preparing for a big complicated procedure and since my wife is a donor so we both were very worried there were so many questions in my mind that time whether it will be painful for me after surgery and what about our future how it will impact our normal life whether we will be able to lead a normal life after it what about our daughter so it was totally uncertain during that time after all her one you know her life kidney is coming from her body to my body that was very looks very scary for us so at the minute doctor told us when you want to go for the surgery like if whatever date so we decided to go on 13 august because it's our marriage anniversary date so i think i got the best gift from my wife on that day and post surgery means you know the life has changed totally like turn around 360 degree from the third day in icu also i was feeling so fresh and energetic i wanted to go out in you know, a room around of course i can't go but uh, you know everything was very smooth i can do whatever i want there is no restriction on diet of course something i have to take care like you know i have to i drink only boiled water i take only hot food like you know i go for regular check up with doctor and mentally also we are so stress free like you know it's like big headache has gone without taking any pain killers i'm really happy that uh, we are able to do the things what we love today and and that also without any compromise physically i'm feeling absolutely normal and emotionally i'm really happy that i could give my husband a new lease of life so many people have suffering from kidney disease and all that thing so they got only two choice either go for dialysis or go for transplant but if you are willing to go for transplant just follow the advice of your doctor with whom you are comfortable and go for regular check up organ donation saved my life you know i got the second life after at the age of 50 51 so it can save many other people's life you know countless other people's life see basically all of us has power to rewrite the ending of someone's story so don't waste it let's make it please go for the organ transplant Well as we all just saw Ketan Shah got a new life at the age of 50 and his wife Zarina is doing perfectly well after the transplant too but there are many others who are filled with anxiety at the discussion of a transplant whether the surgery will be painful whether life will ever come back to normal let's take this opportunity to bust some of the myths around organ transplant through today's discussion My first question today is going to be for Dr. Gulati which is why is kidney health important and what changes can we make to our day to day lifestyles to keep our kidneys in good shape doctor Well uh, kidney health is important because kidney is a very critical organ in the body which gets rid of all the toxins that accumulate as a result of our daily metabolic processes the food that we eat you know the water that we drink the excess water is removed and the importance of kidney health lies that if these toxins build up they damage each and every other organ which is healthy notably the effect is most pronounced on the heart and lot of patients of you know even mild moderate kidney disease actually die because of heart disease similarly during covid times also we learned that the patients who didn't make it were majority of those had chronic kidney disease underlying and they developed covid they didn't survive the mortality rates were at least 30 times higher in patients with chronic kidney disease so kidney health is critical to your overall well being of not only yourself but all your organs that's very well said doctor that kidney health is very very important and crucial not just for your own self but for all your organs because it's very important that all the organs of our body are hale and healthy and functioning for us to have a good life now I'll come to you dr menon because we talk about the relevance of ckd so what i wish to ask you today is that what exactly is the relevance of ckd to the pharma industry can you tell us more about some of the recent advances in the space that have happened So thank you Sakshi as Dr Gulati has just referred chronic kidney disease 
is a public health problem and certainly the pharma industry uh, takes notice of this it has a prevalence of almost 16 to 18 percent and it is progressive in nature so it's not something which uh, is diagnosed and remains the same. It progresses and worsens over time, leading to kidney failure. Uh, so the pharma industry, in collaboration with academia, has been doing major progress in this area, be it the diagnostics, be it devices, be it the uh, therapies which can be helpful, and also care models which can help in the last stages of the disease. So early identification is key and uh, the diagnostics around this has been something that all the device companies are looking into. Uh, we are also looking at interventions to slow kidney progression and uh, some of the new drugs or SGLT2 inhibitors have shown that uh, this is possible. Uh, we are also looking at complications of chronic kidney disease like anemia, uh, metabolic bone disease, which can be supported with newer therapies. And last but not the least, which is the key topic for today, is uh, sharing the right options uh, when it comes to patients at end stage kidney disease, kidney failure, having the options well understood for patients so that they can make an informed decision. So we can say we are entering a new era in nephrology and uh, increasing awareness on these advances are key. Yes, indeed. Increasing the awareness on these advances is the key because when we talk about chronic kidney disease and if someone happens to have it, for a person to get anxious or restless or just troubled is very normal. But then again, science today has advanced so much that there is a solution for such problems or such cases also, which is the reason we are having this discussion today also to create awareness about CKD. And now, Dr. Gulati, I'll be coming to you to ask you that does a diagnosis of chronic kidney disease mean the end of the road for the patient? Is there any line of treatment available to reverse the damage? Uh, the answer is no. You know, now uh, gone are the days uh, where we had we could do very little. Uh, and uh, we have now a lot of molecules, a lot of drugs at our disposal, where uh, if chronic kidney disease is diagnosed in time, we can add years to life and life to years of our patients. Uh, but the biggest problem is that uh, chronic kidney disease is a silent killer. So majority of the patients you know, are coming to us very late. Uh, we have five stages of kidney disease. Most of us are data from the Indian Society of Technology Chronic kidney disease registry shows that most of them are still coming to us in stage four and stage five. And that is where the problem lies, essentially, a late diagnosis. But if we are able to screen these patients, pick them early, say in stage one and stage two, there's a lot that we can do um, for these patients. So basically, early diagnosis is what you hinted towards, doctor, right now, that that may be the possible cure towards just preventing a case of a patient from going to bad to worse. So early diagnosis, of course, is needed. But uh, Dr. Gulati, the statistics that we highlighted at the start of the session revealed that while 2 lakh patients suffer from renal failure each year, only 10,000 to 11,000 get a kidney transplant. So what and according to you, is basically causing this gap? I think there are several factors, you know. First and foremost, I would feel that there's a big knowledge gap. There are a lot of myths that uh, surround kidney disease. And I don't know if you also have a look at the social media. It is full of all kinds of alternative therapies. You'll find several treatments like stop kidney dialysis, stop kidney transplant, you know, which are offered at a fraction of the cost. A few thousands of rupees compared to say about a five lakh rupees that cost for a kidney transplant. So the patients often get, you know, um, lured into this trap uh, of alternative therapies, uh, which I would say are untested, unscientific, and unvalidated therapies. So my first advice to everyone who's listening to this is: so you are dealing with your human body, and you have all learned biology, and we are all science is a discipline. So please resort to scientifically validated therapies only, which have been well researched, well published and well accepted all over the world. And a lot of these patients get into this vicious cycle. And by the time they come to us, they're actually too weak to undergo transplant. The second issue is people, there is a second myth is that, you know, by donating a kidney, you know, you will weaken yourself, you'll become handicapped. Or, and as excellently as 
demonstrated in this video. With kidneys, by donating kidney, nothing happens to you. You've got two kidneys. Some of one in thousand normal people are born with a single kidney and they could live their entire life unknowingly until somebody did an ultrasound and found out that you had one kidney. So one healthy kidney is good enough for your entire life. So you won't, nothing is going to happen to you. And this has again been looked at in scientific studies. People who donated 50 years back one kidney, they have lived their entire life in a healthy way without any harm coming to them. So this is again another impediment. The third is, uh, you know, we are a, now in a small family norm. Um, so when you are looking for a kidney transplant, uh, you want a person who's healthy. Uh, there's a lot of, sometimes we see diabetes, as you all know, is the one of the commonest causes of kidney disease. So there are other people there in the family, but they are diabetic. You know, the children are too young to donate. And if there's sometimes there's no blood group match. So there are numerous challenges, but I think we have found solutions to each and every one. The, I think you have to start where there's a will, there's a way. So if you will yourself that you are going to get ahead with a kidney transplant, you will get one somewhere or the other. But I think the major issue in our country still remains the will part, I, I, as I say in my day to day practice. Well said, doctor, that where there's a will, there's always a way, in fact. But, doctor, the process of an organ transplant is perceived as a complicated one that could drain a person of all the resources and also cause a risk to their life. So can you share your thoughts on this part about what I just asked you, doctor? So, yeah, economics is a major part in every treatment. Um, yeah, there's no denying that. Uh, but the process is really simplified and... Uh, you know, contrary to what most people might feel, the cost is also not enormous. Uh, the cost of kidney transplant in most hospitals across the country ranges between 5 to 7 lakhs. But in our practice, when the patients come to us, and only last week I had a patient, this patient had spent 3.5 lakhs on some water tilting therapy. So, you know, they exhaust their resources on all these kind of untested therapies. The second thing is that, you know, they are not prepared for uh, transplant, so they go on to dialysis. So if you want to save money, the best way to do is to do a preemptive transplant, any transplant without dialysis. Because roughly the amount of money that you are going to spend on over years of dialysis is the same what you would spend on a kidney transplant. So if you are aware of this, if you are well prepared in advance, you know, this treatment is well within the reach of the vast majority. Uh, the government also has done a lot and uh, through the Prime Minister's program, uh, National Rural Health Mission, it does support and a lot of states are also supporting this. So again, I come back to the same thing that if you are willing to go ahead with the kidney transplant, you'll find a lot of help available all around you. Uh, the only catch is, yes, the donor, as far as the kidney donor is concerned, it has to come from, you know, the family, uh, either the first degree or second degree relatives. And that's, again, an area has, uh, has been highlighted previously that fraught with a lot of myths, uh, which we need to overcome. Thank you so much, Dr. Gulati, for showing us the gains of transplant over dialysis for a patient suffering from renal failure. Now, can you tell us how can one find a kidney? Is it possible to buy a kidney or can we, or for that matter, can a patient approach someone for this? Because these are some of the common myths that people have. So, right. you know, that a kidney will be available in the market or possibly one can buy a kidney. Is that possible to do so? Yeah, before we do it, there's one more fact we just missed out as to what are the outcomes. You know, if you're not going to go ahead with the transplant, you're going to go on dialysis. Well, the survivals in kidney transplant after five years are about five times better than in dialysis. So you're not only really going for a treatment at a lower cost, but with much better outcomes. And after transplant, as you saw, the patient has got complete rehabilitation. He is able to get back to work earn for himself and his medications and also support his family. Whereas a person on dialysis actually becomes dependent on the family. So that's another point that people have to realize once they're choosing dialysis over transplant. Uh, now coming to finding a kidney and you know whenever these families come to us and the first thought in everyone's mind is where can I buy a kidney? Well, the only place you can buy a kidney is in films, in the world of fiction. Unfortunately, 
kidney transplant in India, whether you like it or not, is strictly regulated by the government called, by an act called the Human Organ Transplantation Act. And we are all governed by that. So you have to have a first degree or a second degree relative uh, within the family. Uh, and uh, in very, very special cases, if you have a very close relation and you can prove it to the authorization committee, so they might give that consent. But by and large, it has to be somebody you know, who's been really close to you and the onus is on you to prove. And unless we get the permission from the authorization committee, we cannot go ahead. So you have to end. As I said, nobody is going to get sick. So people are unnecessarily scared of donating kidneys to their loved ones. Uh, the other source uh, is um, what we call a cadaveric transplant, which in India still remains, uh, you know, unutilized. Uh, India has the unique distinction of having the world's highest road traffic accidents, uh, the world's highest potential organ donors, because that's where the uh, organs come from, and but the world's lowest organ donation rates. Because even after brain death has been explained to these families, they are just not you know, willing to pledge the organs, to donate organs. So that's another source that remains to be utilized. And there's a lot we can do on this front, but that's a other discussion, you know, for another day. But you know, organs can come from your living related, uh, your relatives or from a cadaveric source. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Gulati, for giving us this valuable piece of insight as to how can a person get a kidney. Now, there is also a fear, doctor, that we see in people that if they happen to donate one kidney, then their health and life expectancy stands to get compromised. Is this belief true in any which ways, doctor? It's absolutely untrue. Studies have shown that people who donated their kidney actually lived longer than the average lifespan of the population. That's because, you know, we pre-selected a kind of healthy uh, population. What we do is we screen these donors for each and every organ function, heart, liver, lung, kidney. And only, only if they, all the 100% of these tests are clear, we accept them. And once we have accepted them, it's almost like a medical guarantee, you know, that and they are also on regular follow-up. A uh, yearly follow-up is mandatory for all the donors. So you know they are into the healthcare system. They are well within our uh, monitoring parameters. Unlike the so once you are accepted and cleared by a medical committee, you can be rest assured that uh, you are not going to come to any harm by donating one of your kidneys. Well, doctor, now just taking this thought forward itself. What exactly happens after the transplant once a person has given their kidney to a patient? Can a kidney transplant recipient lead a normal life after getting a kidney? Absolutely. So, um, you know, the transplant patient is kept in the hospital for within a, for about a week. Uh, so in the first few months, they are on intensive immunosuppressive medication. They are risk for, at a risk for infection. So we generally advise them for the first four to six weeks to stay off work. Uh, they can be at home within their family. And uh, other than that, you know, rest of life is normal. You, they can eat the same food, drink water, except that, yes, they have to be regular with their medications. I think that's one very important part they'll have to learn. That's where life does change a bit, that their immunosuppressive medication and certain other medications have to be taken lifelong. Not only that, there are periodic checkups. Uh, that are advised by these doctors and they have to follow up with us. Uh, we can we alter the medication from time to time. But other than that, uh, if I look at her, our patients, about 95% of them are back to work by six weeks. The rest, 5 to 5% 5 are back to work in the next one to two months uh, and life goes on as normal, other than those uh, periodic checkups and regular medications. So what we can make out definitely is that there is light at the end of the tunnel. No matter how dark your situation in life health-wise gets, there's always going to be light at the end of the tunnel. Only if you're able to contain and also get your situation analyzed and caught in the early stages of life, especially when it comes to 
chronic kidney failures, which have become a very common thing amongst the population today. Now, moving on, I'll be bringing Dr. Menon into the discussion. As one of the leading players in healthcare, doctor, what role can pharma cause like Sanofi do to improve the outcomes in patients with CKD and ESRD? Yeah, so thank you, Sakshi. And uh, uh, we all talk about, uh, you know, making patients aware and educating them. But I think uh, these are areas which uh, re require more focus, uh, especially on the acceptability of the safety of organ donation, because there are lots of myths around organ donation. And the more we are able to sensitize people to the safety of these aspects, it will help. Uh, also on the long term benefits of transplant, as Dr. Gulati has uh, nicely explained to us. So all of this is a responsibility. and as pharma industry we are collaborating with uh, senior experts like dr gulati to spread the message uh, to the right stakeholders and also uh, taking the help of uh, you know ngos who can further uh, address it to the right audience and also get insights from this audience on what are their current unmet needs so this is a concerted effort from the government, from the public and the private sector, which will really help us to give momentum to increasing the donation rates as well as taking care of organ shortage. Uh, the second important area where uh, Sanofi and uh, uh, companies like us would be uh, making a difference would be in terms of patient assistance programs. Uh, for some of the molecules which we have in kidney transplant and also to improve the access to these patients we can support them through patient access programs through uh, educating them on the methods of accessing uh, you know the process because that's the biggest challenge for patients as you rightly mentioned can we buy a kidney so that the confusion starts from there so these are two of the areas and last but not the least we continue to understand the pathophysiology of kidney disease through through research and come out with newer and newer therapies and medications well to all our viewers who had joined this discussion with us over here today first of all thank you for joining in because this has indeed brought us to the end of today's discussion i would like to thank both our doctors for having shared their valuable insights on such an informative topic and also for making this session so informative. Thank you, doctors. Thank you, Sakshi. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Gulati, Thanks. and thank you, Sakshi. Thank you. And to all our viewers, before we sign off, I would also like to thank Sanofi for partnering with us on this important topic with us over here today. Well, till the next time, it's me for now saying goodbye.